Um, before I start, I'd like to say thank you very much to the organizers of the session, to Mireya, Christina and Patty. It's a great pleasure to be here and participating in a, a session that actually uh, encompasses different disciplines of uh, archaeology and art. Um, okay, so uh, let's change uh, the place. We are uh, coming back to Mesoamerica, thank you, uh, once again, and to the Maya area. And I'm going to focus on a special category of uh, <coughs> ceramics, polychrome ceramics that were excavated during the last decade of research carried out by, by our project, the Dinakum Archaeological Project. Um, this recent research uh, carried out at Nakum, uh, which is a Maya site located in northeastern Guatemala, has brought about the discovery of a large collection of ceramic artifacts. This substantial assemblage includes fragments of polychrome vessels that are decorated with elaborate iconographic scenes and painted hieroglyphic texts. Most of them date to the late classic period that we date more or less between 600 and 800 AD, which represents the peak of pre-Columbian Maya civilization. Fragmentary vessels and shards with hieroglyphic texts provide us with significant historical information, both in terms of local laws, but also with regards to links via both trade and socio-political alliances that the Nakum elites maintained with neighboring Maya centers and polities. This paper presents the collection of Nakum hieroglyphic ceramics that have been excavated by the Nakum, sorry, I have already mentioned, by the Nakum Archaeological Project of the Jagiellonian University in, in Krakow. Um, whereas the vast ma majority of Maya ceramics are quotidian, unslipped, and plain, made to fulfill a wide range of functions, there is one category of ceramics that stands apart. This particular category involves serving vessels, especially those manufactured for the royal court. These stand out from all ceramics in an archaeological assemblage by their surface treatments alone, usually highly smooth and burnished, as well as decorated with a wide array of dazzling colors applied with detailed patterns as well as elaborate iconographic scenes and glyphic texts. By focusing on these highly decorated ceramics, we are able at times to apprise their motifs, their iconography, and their glyphs, which together enables us to determine where these ceramics were originally produced. Before I actually start characterizing the, the vessel, polychrome vessels that we found with glyphs, uh, I'd like to also show you this map that shows uh, what we usually call the Southern Maya Lowlands uh, with the location of Nakum. What is uh, really important here and for the, the whole our discussion is that Nakum is actually situated between uh, two major Maya superpowers. One of them was Tikal, located now in what is uh, northern Guatemala, and another Maya superpower was um, the so-called Snake Kingdom that is uh, uh, Kalakmul, I mean, the Ka Kalakmul was probably the second major capital of the Snake Kingdom. Uh, but Naranjo, which is actually located just east of, um, of Nakum here, uh, was part of larger Snake Kingdom. So basically, Nakum was squeezed between these two super Maya superpowers. Uh, we're going to start from uh, ceramics that show links to, especially to Naranjo, and this is first of them, a rim of cylindrical vessel. Um, we can see that on the cream base, uh, the exterior is decorated with red painted glyphs along, along the rim. They refer to the content of the vase and the ownership. The contents as preserved is written Utal Cacao, uh, which means for fruity cacao. Uh, then followed by an important elite title that can be uh, read Chak Chok, uh, which means a great yoth. So here we have Utal, Cacao, and the title uh, Chak Chok. There are a series of paleographic features that suggest that this ceramic vessel originally stems from Naranjo. In fact, the glyphs of this vessel can be compared 
to the analogous contents and titular sections of the vessels produced for Ah Wasal, the long reigning king of Naranjo who came to power in 546 and reigned until at least 615 AD. Close comparisons can be drawn with at least four of the vessels of Ah Wasal showed here on this um, slide. So uh, above, on, on the top row, we can see our Nekum example and then um, four vessels whose um, provenance is unfortunately unknown, but uh, polygraphically and stylistically, we know that they represent the same workshop. Uh, these four examples um, are well preserved and they mention actually the name of Ah Wasal as the owner of this vessel. So based on this comparisons, we can actually suppose that the, our fragmentary um, preserved uh, shirt can be also uh, ascribed to his workshop and, uh, and he was and, and it was produced uh, by a workshop that he um, sponsored um, another vessel that suggests connections to Naranjo is this fragment of a bowl which has a black painted rim with red painted glyphs and iconography on an orange background the glyphs for the most part uh, appear to be pseudoglyphic and they don't provide a coherent information. However, the manner in which glyphs are rendered, rendered precisely matches paleographically the way in which the same hieroglyphs were written during the reign, once again, of Ah Wasal, thereby corroborating once again a specific link to Naranjo and the ceramic workshop of this site. The last example that betrays links with Naranjo under the reign of Ahwasal is this ceramic bowl, which is very similar to the fragment that has been just described. <coughs> However, in this case, it is iconography that is more revealing. The long and slender linear elements together may form this stylized beak of a humming bird. The main diagnostic element of a humming bird in my iconography is the flower that adorns its elongated beak or bill. In this context, we should mention about a vessel now in a private collection in Guatemala, shown on your right-hand side. On this bowl, the iconography is dominated by a kneeling male figure that braces a large ceremonial bar. The text along the rim confirms that this was once owned by none other than Ahwasal, the king of Naranjo. The, con the connection to Naranjo is all the more significant since one of the major tutelary deities of this dynasty, of this city, was a human bird deity. As such, although highly stylized, the schematic break, beak, sorry, of the human bird penetrating the characteristic flower on, on the Nakum vessel, which we think is this element here, um, may refer to this uh, patron di deity of, of Naranjo and show uh, very close links between these two sites during the late 6th and early 7th century. All the above described vessels reveal close connections between Akum and Naranjo um, at this early date, with Naranjo pre presumably serving in dominant position and Nakum in subservience. This provides an impression of strong and regionally dominant Naranjo during the reign of the king Ahwasal. Another interesting uh, artifact that follows is this plate, of which only two fragments survived. However, the size of these fragments indicate that the plate was once 41 centimeters in diameter. The preserved elements of iconography indicate that it once represented one or several persons in a dancing position. What merits special attention here are glyphs decorating the rim of the plate. Apart of two regnal names, we find a fragmentary preserved glyph that consists of a com sign. So we have the two regnal names. One of them is here, another one is here. And then uh, a very interesting glyph that consists of a com sign preceding as a main sign representing a male profile. This sign seems to be a dynastic title very popular for Shulton area. Unfortunately, the sign in question remains undeciphered. Nevertheless, uh, uh, the preferential appearance of this title on ceramics related to Sholton suggests that this was a type of dynastic title used by the elite and royalty of this site. The possible example of 
the dish found at Nakum would thereby imply connections between these two sites, possibly during the 7th century AD. Uh, now we're going to focus on connections with, um, with Tikal. Um, one of the hallmarks of the eastern central lowlands are the finely painted ceramic vessels bearing the so-called Holmu dancer scenes. Named after the type specimen encountered at the site of the same name in 1930s. The imagery of on these vessels is typically painted in dark red outlines with diluted orange wash applied sparingly to, to define figurative elements in the foreground. This stand out on the neat cream backgrounds that define the ceramics of this type. Primary emphasis of the Colmo dancer scenes is placed on the maze god, <coughs> represented dancing in majesty, bearing intricate regalia, and often assisted by a dwarf. S these scenes are interpreted as representing pivotal moment in the mythic narrative of the maze god, his resurrection from the underworld. The dams of the Holmo dancer vessels were of great importance to the sites of the eastern central lowlands, with Naranjo, Schulten, and Rio Azul distinguishing themselves as important production centers of this type of ceramics. Uh, the rim text of these vessels usually include the standard dedicatory formula and prominently name their original owners. For Naranjo, these were owned by the 7th century king Kach Tiliuchan Chach who was a patron of production of many of such vessels. For example, an example that you can see on your left-hand side is a vessel produced at Naranjo, owned by this lord, Kach Tiliu Chanchak, and later gifted to one uh, of um, lords from completely different site, Buena Vista del Cayo, which is now located in Belize. And actually, this vase was found in, in a tomb of, uh, excavated at Buena Vista del Cayo. Uh, here we have a map that shows also <coughs> connections um, of this lord with many different sites based on, on, on the, uh, the discovery of this special category of vessels. And then comes a big surprise, very small fragment that we have excavated at Nakum. Uh, so this discovery is not particularly surprising, um, but given the proximity to Naranjo that is located only 24, maybe 25 kilometers east of Nakum. Uh, what is uh, rem remarkable, however, is the name of the owner of that vase that has been preserved, and that uh, this name actually is the name of the king of Tikal. The reference is made through uh, the well-known royal emblem glyph of the kings of Tikal written Kuhul Mutul Ahau, or godly Mutul king, or in other words, godly Tikal king, a title built on the toponym of this ancient metropolis. Since Tikal is not known as a production center of Holmu dancer ceramics, we are left to conclude that this vessel must have been produced at an established workshop, given the quality of the line work and ceramic generally, and crafted as a bespoke vase made specifically to be given to a lord of Tikal as a sign of thanks and gratitude. It is quite possible that the discussed fragment comes from a vase made for a king of Tikal in one of the royal workshops of Naranjo. The question is, however, how this vase is in fact made its way to Nakum. According to one hypothesis, it might have been gifted by Tikal king to one of the Nakum lords to cement ties between Tikal and its lesser neighbor to the east. Uh, that Nakum um, maintained close relations with Tikal is also made evident by other ceramic finds made at this site. For instance, the well-known Tikal dancer plates, typical for Tikal region, are in essence just the local adaptations equally representing the maze god dancing out of the underworld at his resurrection. One such Tikal dancer plate was found in particularly well-furnished royal tomb at Nakum, burial one, that we can see here. And uh, it's quite possible that this uh, vessel was manufactured at Tikal and then also gifted to one of the Dinakum uh, kings. It can be dated more or less to 700 AD. Similarly, it is during uh, this time 
that we see a profusion of another group of ceramics called Zakatal Cream Polychrome, decorated with the so-called dress shirt design, so named because of its apparent <coughs> similarity to freshly laundered dress shirts. Um, a large collection of such vessels was especially found in a very famous grave tomb of uh, the king of Tikal, Hasao Chan Kawil, that was buried below this huge uh, pyramid temple, Wana Tikal. We can see some examples on your right hand side. And many similar vessels of, that represent this type, such as the cream polychrome, were also excavated at, uh, at Nakum. Okay, so, since we are running out of time, I'm gonna just move to the conclusions. Um, the collection of Nakum ceramics with painted text is not very numerous, but it is restricted to the late classic period dated to 600 and 800 AD. This is the period of most intensive interaction with peers and the time when non-local ceramics are appearing at the site. Rather than equating ceramics with people, as has often been done in archaeology, we don't see these vessels as implying foreign or even external presence at Nakum. Instead, we see these particular vessels as singular moments in the time, as precious objects that were gifted, traded, bequeathed, and inherited by a very small segment of society to foster bonds of friendship, amity, marriage, and alliances between the distinct royal households. Whether the original owners were even present at Nakum is unknown, but these ceramics serve as highly illustrative and tangible proxies of human interactions conveying not only their proprietorship, but also the heavily charged symbolism that these display. Based on the collection that we have recovered, we, can, we may try to make some preliminary attempts to reconstruct the changing fortunes in the Nakum history. The style of the vessels presented in this paper and the text often accompanying them indicate that the existence of complex cultural and perhaps even political contacts between Nakum and other powerful neighbors must have existed. Thus, this collection complements our poor knowledge about the history of Nakum during the classic period, which is mainly based on the lecture of a few carved monuments. Although our interpretations should be considered as very preliminary, it is clear that in the first part of the late classic, more or less between 600 and 700 AD, Nakum was more oriented politically and culturally towards mighty Naranjo and possibly, possibly serving as its vassal. Nevertheless, during the 8th century, it seems to be more allied with Tikal. This supposed change in political orientation could have been at least partly due to the victory of Tikal over Kalakmul in 695 and its ally, allies, including Naranjo. So our data from Fonakum indicate that ceramics serve as yet another distinctive epigraphic record, one that wholly complements the monumental record that is usually emphasized in the reconstruction and elaboration of ancient history. Thank you, and sorry.